Good luck. Thank you very much. Right, afternoon everyone. Thank you for coming on. Got uh, yeah, today doing acro tooling. Um, obviously, for those of you who don't know, again, I'm Rob from Hi4, regional sales engineer. Uh, Hi4 are ETG's work holding and tooling division. So, a little bit on uh, a specific product today. Last week, a little bit of an overview more towards the fixture side. So, now looking at the standard products, starting with some of the tool holding range, and um, it's acro. So a little bit about ACRO as well, um, established in 1980 and based in Taiwan, mainly, um, well, sort of where the manufacturing side is, employ around 45 people, um, obviously doing tool holders for precision manufacturing and then other accessories as well, which I'll get into a little bit more, um, quite a wide range of products. Um, the massive Vova sort of in Asia, as you see there, working in Taiwan, China, Japan and across Asia as a whole really uh, with deals across Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Africa uh, where obviously the UK agents for Acro so everything sort of in the UK comes through us. Um, we've had a lot of success so far with Acro in that we, we do offer trials out um, every time we've offered a trial so far we've had success in getting orders with Acro, uh, repeat business, a couple of customers to name a few, um, UHV Designs, Goodman, Olio, and we've had a recent order from a company called Rotamic, um, about a 13,000 pound order for a lot of Acro gear. So it's, uh, yeah, it's going quite well to say the least. Uh, we also offer the Acro packs, I think slightly mentioned it the other day, when ETG sells some of the VMCs, depending on the customer and values and stuff like that, sometimes we put the Acro packs out there, which we've got a, a partnership with Gearing where we put three holders out, they put a holder in and a couple of cutters as well. Uh, so that's something that's working for us, sort of introducing the Acro range to customers. Some of the products I'm going to get a little bit more specific on um, shortly, but yeah, just an overview to see the, the fine boring systems, uh, collet holders, probably the most common thing that we sell along with the collets. Uh, the two that I'll be focusing on shortly is the HC and NR. They do also offer the ER style, uh, which is a more universal type across other manufacturers as well. But we try and stay away from that a little bit if we can and aim towards the HC and NR purely on the basis that we then get those holders in and the collets then have to come through us. So it's just a um, sort of a keeping the customer with us and reselling sort of point of view, really. Um, some of the other stuff, side lock holders, drill chucks, shell mills, and there's a new product, well, there's a couple of new products which I'll be introducing towards the back end. Um, hydraulic chucks is something that they've now started doing, and also an ultrasonic holder, which I will get into a little bit more later on. A um, couple more on there, so quick change topping chucks, uh, through coolant supply chucks and there's sort of pulsed options other accessories which include the torque wrenches for the tightening uh, of the certain holders uh, the collets to obviously go with the holders the collet extractors and they also do another few little bits and bobs but uh, one thing that's included in that is uh, the tool presetters as well so if something they offer within the range uh, just getting into some specifics, so I mentioned earlier the fine boring systems. They offer these um, in all different types of so fine boring systems, rough um, modular holders, and these are compatible across all different spindles, so for all different machines and all dependent on the customer requirement as well. Um, so there's something to sort of suit every, every need within that. The NR series has been probably one of the most popular ones. Um, that we've done it's the one that competes with sort of like the likes of Nikon mostly because it's actually compatible with their collets so uh, if you've got the Nikon collets get those into this and vice versa so it's um yeah that works well and it's sort of a lot more competitive in terms of the price of Nikon as well so that sort of brings customers towards it a lot more and um, the 
collets that they offer. There's a couple of different ones. The one we try and go for is one I've mentioned on here, the AA grade, and that's within five microns. Uh, with that, the tooling wrench at the bottom that you can see on the bottom left of the page is a roller bearing wrench, which sort of goes round the end on the um, on the gauge of the holder, and that's where it tightens up on that nut. And there's quite a range of gauge lengths available as well that you can see. So it's 60, 90, 120, 160, and 200 mil. Uh, you see where it's available on the right hand side, different styles. So HSKs, and then obviously BT 30, 40, and 50. You can see the different balances and how highly balanced it is as well, up to 30,000 on some of those holders, uh, well, on most of the holders, and 20,000 on the BT50 side. Uh, and it's also available in face and taper. The HC is another one that they offer. We sort of target customers on five axis machines with these. They've got quite a good, um, but it's sort of a narrow, long um, gauge on there. So good for getting the access on five axis. So there's also no nut on the end. So these are tightened from behind instead. So you've got that access to get into sort of deeper pockets on five axis. Um, we've had a lot of good success. One of the customers I mentioned earlier is um, Goodman Precision in Milton Keynes. Um, they've been, you know, sort of really successful with these and types that told us that they've found them more accurate on their components than the uh, shrink fit type that they were using previously. And again, available in quite a few different types. You've got the HSK 63 and then BT 34 and 50 as well, all balanced up. Um, obviously the BT is 20,000 and then 10,000 on the 50 and 15,000 on the HSK. So all highly balanced again. So finding good accuracy with those and a good range of gauge lengths as well. 60 mil is the smallest and then right up to 160 mil. The CH million chuck, so it's a bit for the heavier operations when you're going a little bit higher than sort of what I'd fit in the last two I've just been talking about. Um, so you can see they go right up to 32 mil diameter and you've got reduction sleeves available as well. Uh, so this will suit some of the harder materials and heavier applications, maybe not quite as accurate, but it'll get get right in there. And then um, you've got a dustproof design on there as well. So that increases your tool life by up to 50%. And um, you see the types that they're all available in and still uh, up to 20,000 on most of them. So we're still high speed. Um, again, a good range of gauge lengths, 85 mil right up to... 165 mil on those and the new one uh, one of the new ones is the hydraulic chucks so Acro didn't originally have the hydraulics um, we've kind of competed so I'll just go back to this with the milling chuck it's got sort of the same clamping force as what you'd expect from a hydraulic chuck so that's where they were sort of targeting that area uh, but they have now brought out a hydraulic it doesn't quite go into the heavy applications the same as the CH milling chuck but it is a lot higher in accuracy. So you see there less than three microns uh, available in BT 30, 40 and 50 uh, or 20,000 and then 15,000 on the uh, on 50. And it's quick tool change with so increasing your efficiency on machining. And there's vibration dampening to increase your tool life and get a better surface roughness across your component. Bit of technical data on the, uh, the bottom there as well, just in terms of the sizes, and if you can see it as well, the uh, my things in the way, the torque on there as well. So the new holder that I sort of want to talk about mostly today, really, is the ultrasonic one that we've not sort of had anything like before. Um, it's quite a new one to us, so we're still learning a little bit. So I'll try and be. As good as I can with it but um, yes it's available again quite a few different holders as you can see on the table on the left hand side uh, run out of less than five microns the recommended speed it mentions on there is 6,000 it actually goes up to 12,000 this uh, rpm but they do I've been told now recommend 10,000 so it just needs changing on that table but yeah we're targeting so different areas with this so customers machining hard brittle materials so something a little bit different um, and it's micro hole drilling and the drills actually go right down to 0.05 of a millimeter so and you can imagine how small that is it's, it's smaller than the eye can see really so it's uh, yeah tiny work and um, these are actually powered by a generator 
where you can control the frequency. Uh, so the image you can see sort of on the bottom right there is the generator, just sort of the plug and play unit. So that's installed just as a plug into a, a standard socket. Uh, and you actually install it like a uh, an angle head, like a standard angle head into the machine. So it's sort of easy enough for a customer to do. Uh, and then just connect to the generator line in. So you've got that controlling on the frequency. And what that does, the reason it's uh, they call it the ultrasonic and it's working faster, it's running at a standard speed. So like I say, 10,000. And then it's got um, sort of z-axis vibrations up and down so it's going up and down sort of twenty-five thousand times per second that's dependent on your um frequency again it can be sort of 21 to twenty-five thousand, uh, and that's sort of more hitting energy based on those vibrations getting quicker results and the thing that this video it sort of targets that i'm going to try and play in a second i don't know how well you can hear it we've had a few tests and it was not always able to hear the conversation overly well but what they're trying to say is it's like a care peening effect. So I don't know if people, everyone knows peening, but it's sort of stress relieving material by hitting it hard with sort of pellets, like metal pellets normally. What they're saying with this is it's a similar sort of effect because of the hard, quick impacts on there. You're actually going to get the strength in the material as well um, as potentially, you know, drilling your holes and it can be used for polishing and stuff like that as well uh, based on the speed of it. I'll try and play this video because it tells you a little bit more about those vibrations. If someone could just tell me if this sounds all right or not because it's been a bit, up and down, I think. No, it's crap. Is it? Yeah. I can't hear anything, mate. Can't hear it. No, that's all right. Yeah. Okay. It's been a bit, like I say, we'd had a few hit and misses with it. But yeah, all he's trying to explain in there is just a little bit more on the. Um, sort of the z-axis vibrations on impacting the material uh, but again it's just sort of stating that it's controlled through the generator that you can see on this image um, and or frequency controlled uh, 21 to 25 kilohertz meaning 21,000 to 25,000 hits per second uh, um, so some of the areas we've been targeting with this, or both the areas we're looking to target, like I say, is quite new to us as well. Um, some of the materials, it's not over clear there, but I'll just go through a few. So like stainless, um, inconoles, quartz, sorry, carbide. Um, so quite a few different applications that it opens us up to. Aerospace being a massive one for us, that's obviously a huge area at the moment where we're targeting anyway um, but yeah there's a lot of metal composite materials what we can work with with this holder speed jobs up um, on harder materials get smaller holes more precision um, and that's really what we're wanting to do other applications could be sort of jewelry people making jewelry and um, we've been told it's really good on sort of the quartz material so detailing stuff like watch faces and um, like i say it does go down to not sorry 0.05 of a mil so getting in none of those uh, sort of watch faces and making the marks a lot quicker and, uh, than sort of a standard holder. Uh, medical, and then we're also looking at sort of surface stress relief. So as mentioned before, can be used in other applications to try and actually strengthen a metal because of the impacts per second, um, rather than just drilling into them, sort of tapping the material and causing it to have strength, sort of like a shot peening effect. couple of component examples we've got here and um, so the inconol that you see on the top left is something that uh, Acro actually trialed themselves not trialed against anything else at the moment because they've said basically it would be too dangerous to try because of tool snapping and stuff like that so it's inconol 718 and what they've done is drill 56 holes into the bottom of the material uh, a 20 mil depth and they're just 0.8 mil of a diameter and that was running at 3000 RPM. But obviously because of the vibrations discussed, um, they've got that cycle time in 2.5 minutes, so two and a half minutes for 56 holes at sort of that small diameter, which is obviously unbelievable. Um, on the right, I've just put a picture on there of a unit installed on a Quasar machine, just so you can see what it's like. Thought it'd be nice for everybody to see it on a Quasar rather than something else. And the bottom image is, obviously zoomed in on a uh, on a microscope 
So it's a 0.05 hole, uh, and that's using a PCB drill. So obviously going into a printed circuit board, which was stainless 304. That was just going at 1500 RPM, and the cycle time on that was seven minutes. And I think I've been told by Acro, so I'm not certain on these figures, but this is what they're given to me, that EDM would have taken 40 minutes on that. And they reckon a standard holder, you'd be looking at something like 60 minutes to uh, to do that, what they've done on that PCB board. So you can sort of see where we're targeting there with the precision work and um, you know getting right down to those small sizes. It's, yeah, it's like I say, point not five of a hole that they can get down to. So uh, it changes quite a lot of things and the way people can sort of approach some of the components that they're doing in different, uh, different applications. That's everything from me on that one. Um, so just want to see if anyone's got yeah any questions on any of the products at all or Acro as a whole, really. Very good, Rob. Well done. Thank you. Good presentation. Thank you very much. So you do have, you've got questions comes up already. So we've got the, uh, okay. the, the, the chat, the chat, the uh, chat, column so anyone want to fire questions at rob just highlight it up in the chat room bit please um gordon coach you've got a question for rob hi rob hi gordon um the hydraulic chucks mm. do, they, do they come with a cap door back end um are they available Top of my head, I'm not sure actually. It's something I say the hydraulic ones that are quite new to us. I don't believe they do now. Uh, I'm just Rob looking Beckett. at Rob Beckett. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it would have, would have been something I would have checked that. The way you had your, your double act the other day with, with uh, Gary. Yeah, that's it. I like, to have a, I like, I like to have someone alongside. <laughs> yeah, you, your double act today's uh, Rob Beckett. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that tells me now we don't, can these you, aren't offered in Captain. Can you answer that question, Rob, please? You muted. Go on, mate. Uh, currently, they don't offer it on the on the Capto range. Um, it's just a normal HSK in uh, BT currently, that's, and that's the same on the whole range of the Acro products. They haven't got anything at the moment on the on the Capto. Uh, it, it was the you know the NTRX and light that I was thinking of. You know. Yeah. Okay, they might, yeah. sorry, they might be able to do it as a special, you know, depending on what comes up. And generally, when they do it as a special, the pricing doesn't change that much. It's more to do with the, obviously, delivery. Um, but I can certainly ask them a question if it's something they're looking at in the near future anyway. It's just to be aware of, you know? Yeah. Thanks. All right. Yeah, it would be a good option to have, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Jamie Fletchmore. Hey Rob, um, just a quick question there on the tooling, on the standard tooling, um, the ER collets and stuff like that. Yes. Um, are all of the tool holders, back end tool holders, um, balanced? Because as you know, all machine tool builders have a balancing um, recommendation on their machines. Yeah. As we have with the quasars. So um, obviously from our point of view, it's a good selling point if all of our tools are balanced and, yeah. and we can promote that. But just wanted to see whether they are balanced at the lower end of the market as well. Yes, they are all uh, they are all balanced. Yes, so I think you see within sort of the presentation there, it was um, just an example. Yeah, like the HC one, um, sort of on the BT range is twenty thousand. So yeah, exactly the same sort of on the ERs. It'll be between fifteen and thirty somewhere within that. I'm not certain what it is, but yeah, I would say it's around the twenty thousand range. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Ollie Riley. Hi, hi, Rob. Hi, Ollie. All right. Good presentation, mate. Just a, a quick one, only because uh, Rob Beckett called me up the other week asking me the same question. So I thought I'd see if if you had if you'd got the answer. If I you can see your question. Yeah, you might know this better yeah. than I do, actually. <laughs> um, on the HC holders, because they obviously tighten up through the back end. Yes. Um, rather than, are they through tool compatible or not? Or 
Uh, the HC, because they're on the back end, I believe they are. But that is something I would check again. Um, Rob Beckett's going to disappear. Right, you right, might know right. more than I do on that one, Ollie. All right. <laughs> no worries. Hopefully, he can trip back in in a second. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Robert, just regarding the HC being through coolant, coolant compatible. It, uh, it's not, no. They, not. they can do it through the holder. The problem is, at the moment, they don't do it on the collets. So not the collets. Right, good. yeah. So, um, it's something they said they might look at, but currently at the moment, it's not through, through spin the coolant, no, on the HC. All right. Okay. Here's Ollie. Steve Brown, is it you, or is one of your kids got a... No, 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 no kids today. They, of, they're doing my head in, so they're in the garden. Um, <laughs> good presentation, mate. Well done. Thank um, you. I just wanted to pick up on Rob's beard as well. I didn't realise how great it was. Yeah. Um, anyway, not you, Rob Beckett. Yeah, Rob Beckett. <laughs> um, in terms of the tooling, then we, we, we obviously had a part, well, a close working relationship with with Nikon, and we were getting yes. a lot of their units out. So, how does our Acro units compare to compare to them? Uh, in terms of sort of the quality and yeah, the quality yeah. and yeah. Yeah, um, the quality is right up there with Nick and not just from a typical salesman point of view here, but it's, uh, it's yeah, right up there with the Nick and stuff. I mean, we've put it in customers as a comparison as well who've used Nick and who've, yeah, said they found it actually better than Nick and obviously that's people's mm -hmm. opinion, but it's always nice to hear from a customer. So, um, yeah, I say in quality as good and the price. Because we had the transition, didn't we, from the tooling packs that, I mean, yes. for the rest of the group that don't know, whenever we deliver a machine, I will put a pack together that goes with yeah. with the machine. So we had a transition from from Nikon over to um, to your to your Acro. So you, yeah, do you get a lot of repeat work from that? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's been obviously quite a limited time at the minute that we've been doing the Acro packs. So we've not had sort of masses of opportunity just yet on that. But yeah, the ones we've sort of taken the Acro packs into, it's certainly been um, the customers have been impressed with what we've put in. Obviously, there's three different holders in there from us and also the gearing one as well so it's yeah an impressive pack and the customers all sort of like what they've seen um, and like I've said previously they've got we've had repeat business after repeat business with every customer we've put Acro into they keep coming back okay cheers mate okay cheers Steve <coughs> okay I think you're out of questions then Rob you'll be pleased to know that's a shame yeah <laughs> Thanks very much. I'll unmute. I'll unmute everyone, and um, we'll give you a clap. Thank you. Well done. Cheers. Thank you. All right. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Right. Cheers, mate. Thanks again, Rob. So uh, tomorrow we have Scott Ellsmere from HK talking to us. Oh, talking to us telling us all about OPS Ingersoll. So look forward to that. Is he on here? I don't think he is, is he? So, uh, yeah, he's probably busy, busy doing his present, putting his presentation together. So we look forward to, to seeing Scott tomorrow at the same time, same place. So have a good evening all. And see you tomorrow. Cheers, Martin. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.